so uh, this uh, we went up to this part uh, the uh, normal convention and deep and deep direction part so up to this much uh, we have covered now we will be studying the remaining two that is for right hand rule another is the right hand rule with override so right hand rule actually uh, it was a uh, like uh, past uh, convention like it was uh, relatively older than the normal convention in today's field work generally the normal convention is used but previously right hand rule was used and what uh, it describes that if uh, suppose uh, i will be okay here i think yes so if this is a plane okay suppose this is an inclined plane and if you want to measure the strike like the strike direction can be in two different ways, uh, like towards this one or towards this one. It can be in two different directions. So to uh, calculate the strike, what the people usually did in the field work, they just put their right hand like this. Okay. So right hand like this and the thumb pointing like this. So you just imagine like uh, on an inclined plane, you just put your right hand and the, hello. Okay. So the thumb, the thumb, uh, whichever direction the thumb would point that to indicate the strike direction. So this is simple. Like you just have to put your right hand on the inclined plane uh, as such that the fingers would point the uh, deep direction. So this is the deep direction and the thumb will be pointing towards the strike. So this will be strike for this is for plane right hand. Uh, similarly, if uh, uh, like another was there right hand rule with override. So it is nothing just the extension of the previous one like here only the strike and deep is used like you can see just 0 3 4 strike and 6 9 is deep with override means you just have to add the deep direction component here like if it is uh, dipping towards southeast then you just mention southeast or uh, northwest any direction the bed is dipping you just have to uh, mention it uh, I think some more people are coming. Okay. Now we will be going to the uh, next one, uh, which is the convention of representing attitude for a linear feature. Like if there is, uh, suppose uh, this is a fault plane. Okay. So on it, there is a slicken side or uh, we can call it like a, a lineation or slicken side. So to measure this slicken side, we, uh, which two features we need? Anyone just tell me for any linear feature, what do we need for attitude measurement? Plunge and trend, sir. Yes. So plunge and trend. So to write those two things, you just have to write first the plunge amount here, then the trend amount. And just remember one thing that for a linear feature, we follow a two digit slash three digit format. Like first a two digit is used, then the three digit train is used. But in a planar feature, you just see, we first use the three digit, then we use the two digit. So that is the difference between the two things. Like in a planar feature for the strike, you just have to mention the first one. Then uh, in linear feature, at the last part, we use the three digit format that is trend. So up to this much, uh, like the convention of uh, re representation attitude, then uh, I have a question, I think, yes. Uh, if the pitch of a line and inclined plane is 90 degree, then what will be the relation between the plunge of the line and true deep of the plane? So anyone who have attended uh, the last class or uh, seen the recording, you just have to tell me, suppose this is a plane and here a lineation is 
given and the pitch with the this is strike okay so also with the uh, strike it is making 90 degree that is pitch is 90 degree then what will be the relation between the plunge of the line and true dip of the plate sir 2 dp is equal to plunge Yes. Uh, can you elaborate, like uh, how it will happen? Just try. Like uh, there will be no shame in doing any mistake. You you are absolutely correct. Just elaborate, like uh, why it should happen. Sir, actually, the true dip is ninety degree from strike. Yes. And, and here the same case. The trend and the 90 degree is rack and uh, launch. Yes. So just see for the plane, if this is a horizontal, okay. So for the plane, this is the true dip amount. Okay. So in this direction, the true dip will be present. And the question is pitch of the uh, line is 90 degree. That means the line is. situating in the true deep direction itself. That means this line, suppose, okay, another line I'm drawing. So this is 90 degree. The line is making 90 degree. That means in this position, whatever the deep of the plane, that will be equal to the plunge of the line because both have the same orientation. Just the line is uh, like, it has one less dimension. It is in a single dimension and the plane is in 2D. So this uh, thing you just have to remember that if the pitch is 90 degree, then plunge and true deep will be like in dimension, both will be equal. And on this uh, concept, one question also came in IIT jam and we'll be doing it uh, soon. So uh, now this part of the, uh, like the attitude measurement and line planes and lines we have already covered. So just try to multiple times revise these uh, concepts and try to solve the question. Don't go for like reading five, six, seven books, just like stick to one, two books and revise it, revise it multiple times and you will be benefited with that. So now we'll be starting uh, another part that will be the topography. And one thing uh, actually sir told me to make a question set like uh, whatever I am teaching this week. Uh, so he will be telling you about if there will be any examination or not. So just the basic like uh, from the slides itself, the MCQ, MSQ, NAT type uh, questions, very basic questions. Uh, if any examination will happen on Sunday, uh, the admins will tell you just ask in the group and I have already uh, sent the question and uh, I think you people will do well if you have attended the class sincerely. Uh, okay, now we will be going to the uh, sec uh, third part that is our module one topic three that is topography, topo sheet and contour maps. So first we'll be going uh, what we have already covered just see we have already covered these three parts. One, two, three. Now we'll be uh, dealing with this one, the topography, forms of data, and whatever things uh, we will be uh, teaching today. Then, okay. So what is topography? Topography means like topos means uh, place and grapho means right. So in a way, any land uh, or any field you visit, so the configuration, like uh, what is the height, how it is oriented, what is its inclination and how much uh, its elevation from the relative sea level. So all these uh, things come in topography. So the study of shape and features of earth. Okay. So this is topography and the topography has three divisions like relief. Relief means like uh, the uh, height, height from the base level we can uh, tell. So suppose uh, if this is a base level, okay. Uh, okay now, sorry, yes. So if this is the base level, so one feature is here, like one is mountain, okay. So another is uh, a basin is formed here. Suppose uh, one feature like this, 
is formed where one slope is steep, another slope is gentle. So similarly, all these features uh, and this feature will have high relief, okay. This is high relief. So this is low relief. So similarly, this relief concept is used in the topographic maps through contours. You will be studying contours and drainage part, like if there is any lake present, any river present, how the river is flowing and how, uh, like which pattern it is producing on the valleys or uh, in between the mountains. So all those things will come in the topography part. Then any town, railway road, like the human uh, induced structures, any anthropogenic work, that will be also be included in the topography. So the, there are three parts. One is relief, one is drainage, one is culture. So these are like just theoretical stuffs. You just have to read, uh, nothing important. And yes, uh, the in topography, there are some definitive symbols we use with symbols and colors and then scale is used what is scale we will be studying like the features that is present in the ground suppose in ground one okay i think many people are coming now yes so suppose uh, on ground one tree is like this much size okay but when we are presenting it on map we cannot like uh, if we have to place actual tree size, then we cannot uh, place every object into a single small map. That's why we reduce the scale of the original feature and we place it like, it will be like a point or it will be like a uh, circular type. So very small reduced scale we represent to uh, feature the objects, natural objects on a map. Then uh, topographical survey. So why topographical survey is important? Through topographical survey, we can determine the position of any feature or any point on the earth. And through uh, to calculate that or to determine the position, we need help from the latitude, longitude, and altitude. Uh, you might have known that this is, if this is a like earth, so this, these lines, okay. This is and this is. So this is the latitude. This is the longitude. And altitude means height. How much uh, height from suppose this is sea level and one mountain is here. So this is the altitude. And then uh, the forms of data like uh, Topographical survey, if we are doing, if the data we are generating, how we are presenting them uh, in different forms. So one form is topographic maps that we will be studying in detail. Other two, you just uh, like remember that uh, you will be studying in the remote sensing part. One is the digital elevation model and another is the digital uh, land, sur sorry, huh, DSM, okay, Dig digital surface model with the DSM. Okay. And relief exhibition means if we are presenting, suppose this is a map, we are presenting different features. So how we can present them in 3D way? Because if any map we are presenting, we are just doing like this, okay. So suppose this is a map. So this is 2D presentation, but how we can present them in 3D? Just by adding the height component, like this one, you just see here, okay. So this is the, uh, this uh, part, whatever you are seeing, this one, this one is the 2D part. Now you are incorporating the height part here. So like this part has higher height, this part has lower height. That's why it is seen like a valley type or basin type. And this part is a mountain. So this is a higher part. So this image is being generated by digital elevation modeling. And uh, there are the different techniques uh, like how we can do topographical survey. So remote sensing is used, then satellite study is used, then sonar mapping uh, for the ocean floor mapping, then LIDAR, like these things, not very important in terms of structural geology, but like you just have a basic knowledge that these things are used in the uh, topographical survey. Then we will be uh, going to the 
okay here uh, the dem it incorporates two things okay one is dsm like digital surface modeling another is dtm digital terrain modeling okay so what is the difference between two just see this diagram so this is a like land surface on which some triangular or you can say some polygonal shape of buildings there so if we are mapping only the surface okay sorry only the like the uh, terrain part without any objects so we just uh, like uh, reject these objects we just study this linear shapes okay the ground shapes only then this is called as the terrain okay so digital terrain modeling means any higher like any building any tree we just reject them we only map this uh, linear ground shape and surface model means it it will include everything it will include the ground also the objects like you can just see the red mark here over above the buildings okay so this red marks follows from the start towards the end so it includes everything so this is the digital surface model now the most important part is the contours so uh, what the, uh, okay up to this much uh, everything is clear or anyone having any doubt hello clear sir yes okay. sir Right. So now see what is topographic contours. So contours are the imaginary lines connecting pointers equal elevation. Okay, that's why they are called as the iso sorry iso elevational lines. Sorry, iso elevational lines. Because they are lying at the same altitude above the MSL. Now, if we are presenting these contours onto a horizontal surface, then we call them the contour maps or topographic maps. Now, just see uh, here. Okay, so if this object is present here and this surface has fourteen hundred meter height, this surface has fourteen hundred meter height, and we are just connecting them through a curved line. Okay. So any uh, height, there are any point that represent fourteen hundred meter height, we just connect them. Similarly, here thirteen hundred, we connect them like a closed loop. Here twelve hundred, eleven hundred. So similarly, we just connect all the points that have equal elevation. So these uh, lines called as the contour lines. And when we are presenting them here, just see, okay, here just see in the central part. This is fourteen hundred like at the top. So just see here. This is your fourteen hundred. Now fourteen hundred. Just we, you come below thirteen hundred here. Here you see thirteen hundred. Okay, this one surrounding this one thirteen hundred. Now twelve hundred. Similarly twelve hundred. So just the three D from the three D contour lines. You present them or project them on a horizontal surface. After project projecting them, it will be called as the topographic maps, and things will be more clear in the next slides. So, what are the characteristics of contour lines? Okay, so the first one is every contour must be closed and continuous line. That means if any map you see, every contour should be like this. Okay, like this, like this. Suppose this is six hundred meter. This is seven hundred. This is eight hundred, like this. But in a map, if some some contour lines seem not close, like if you are seeing a map here, and uh, some contour lines like this, okay, some like this closed, and some just come here, here, here. Okay, so these seems they are not closed. Uh, so uh, it might be you might be asking that our principle is every contour must be closed then how it can be uh, discontinuous here so actually we are seeing only one part of the map if you just bring back another portion of the map here 
and join them, then these contours will be passing like this. Another portion here, if you bring back the map and here this, okay. So on a larger part, these contours will be closed in shape. And another point uh, is iso-elevational lines. We have already studied these contours are iso-elevation lines and generally do not cross each other. Like here you can see that every contour is making its own loop. They are not crossing each other. 600, 700, 800, they are a different uh, circular patterns. But there are two exceptions. What are the exceptions? In case of a vertical cliff, okay. Vertical cliff means suppose something is like this, okay. Straight. The contours overlap on top of each other. Here, this is the C, vertical cliff. And how it is overlapping? Suppose this elevation, you tell 900, okay. So this is the 900 contour. This one, suppose this one is the 800 contour. This one is the 700 contour. Now you have to present them on the topographical map. So if you are seeing them here, okay, your eye is here, you are seeing them. So how it will look? Just like, uh, just think how it will look if you are seeing something above and every contour line is just situating like this. This is a straight object, not like this curved object. This is a completely straight. This is 900, 800, 700. And if you are seeing it above, how it will look? Anyone just try. Can you people facing any difficulty? Like, uh, I have to explain it better. Just like tell me, I will uh, try to do it in a other way. Okay, uh, let's see. Sir, it looks just a point. Yes, uh, okay, let's see here. Okay, suppose, uh, see, suppose here, Suppose uh, this is a straight object, okay? My phone is a straight object. And here, at this point, this is a higher elevation. So suppose 900 meter contour. This is 800 meter contour, similarly 700. Now I have to see them vertically. Like if I am seeing it here, if I am seeing the object here, I have to see it. So how it will look? Like, can you imagine how it will look if you, the object is completely straight, it is not curved. So like it is circle, like yes, circle too. Like, uh, okay, you are telling it is circle. Then just, I will be sharing the screen now. Just see. If this object is like this, okay. Uh, this object is like this. You are seeing here, something, here something, and here something. And when projecting the map, you can only see this part, okay. You can only see this part of 900, and how much you can see of 800, only the remaining part. The central part you cannot see, like just see here, okay. Just see this, this diagram. You see 1400 here, then the remaining 1300, why you are able to see it? Because the 1300 is extended more than the 1400. Similarly, the 1200 is extended more than the 1300. That means when you are going below, each contour is just orienting like this. Okay. This, this, so similar. But if you are seeing a straight object, okay. So how it will look? It will just look like this. This is 900. Below this, same is the 800 because this is 800 and it will look exactly below the 900. So you cannot differentiate between which is 900, which is 800 because this is a straight object. So both have the similar extensions. This is 900, this is 800, this is 700. So if you are seeing from here, okay, how can you differentiate between which is 900, which is 800? 
because everything looks one circle. So can you get my point? Like why here you can see multiple circles, but why here you can see only one circle? Got it? Yes, sir. Okay, just see here. See, now this, this is, this line is curved, okay? This line is curved. So if th this part is 50 part, so you are seeing it here, okay? This circle, 50. This is 50, this is 50. So now you are projecting it, you are seeing it clear. Similarly, 40, so 40 here, another 40 here. So this is 40 contour. So the left part of the diagram, this part diagram, you can see every circle distinct from each other. But when you can see the vertical clip, just see 40 projecting here, 30 projecting at the same place, 20 also projecting at the same place. So that's why when there is a vertical cliff, all the contours overlap on top of each other. You can see only one contour and you cannot tell which elevation it shows. Okay. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Okay, nice. Then another exception is in case of an overhanging cliff. What is overhanging cliff? This one. Like the below part is like this and the upper part, the upper portion of the structure, it is just like hanging downwards. Like just see this one. Actually, the structure should be like this, but for some tectonic regions, the structure is like this. So the upper part is here, lower part is here. So now when you see this kind of structure, so now just see the projection, okay? So this is 250, this is 250, this is 200, this is 200. Now when you are projecting the 250 part and 200 part, just observe that here the 250 contour, just like this, the 250 contour and the 200 contour, they are intersecting each other. Just see, this is 250, this is 200, okay? This is 200. This 200, this 250 intersecting at this point, which should not occur in normal cases, but it is happening in case of an overhanging cliff. So these two exceptions, you just have to um, like remember that vertical cliff contours overlap on top of each other and overhanging cliff higher, higher contours cross over the lower, means they like intersect the lower ones. Now, uh, some other characteristics. Uh, if there are two kinds of features, like one is valley, another is mountain, okay. So if you are going like this, like this, okay. So this is one contour, this is another contour, this is another contour. So suppose this is 400, 500, 600, okay. Now if you seeing from the above, you are projecting them in a map, okay. So this is a map. Now what you will see, first you, from this side, you will see 400, again 500, 600. Now, when you are going below the slope from here, you will again encounter 600, again encounter 500, again encounter 400. So what is it indicating that the contours are coming in pairs? Here also in the valley itself, like here, you are, if you are coming, in, this is 400, suppose this is 300. And when you are going again above, 300 will again appear. 400 will again appear. Just see this diagram, just see, you will understand that the contours are go in pairs. Same co contour is encountered twice. Another thing is the valley. Whenever the contour lines are passing through a valley, they produce a V-shaped outcrop. And the V will point the upstream direction. This much you have to, like it is a thumb rule that valley contours are V-shaped and V will point the upstream direction. Whereas hill contours are usually U-shaped. You just see here. This is U-shaped, okay. But this is relatively V-shaped. This is river valley. This is V-shaped. And this is 
U shape. Now, in heels, the higher contours are enclosed by lower ones. Just see here, this is a heel. Okay, so oh, sorry. This is a heel. This is 600. So the higher elevation is in center. Now the lower contours are surrounding by the sur surrounding the higher contour. That means the higher contour will be at center and the others will be in the side by regions. Whereas in valley, the uh, like structure changes. Why? Because if it is a valley, that means here 300. So, okay, this is 300 contour. This is 400. This is 500. So this is the lowest elevation. And when you are seeing it above or projecting it onto the map, the 300 will be at the center surrounding by the other higher contours. So these are the two things that for hills, higher contours are enclosed by lower ones. And for valleys, lower contours are enclosed by higher ones. Then another two rules are for the V-shaped contours, for the river valley contours, the convexity towards higher ground. That means, just see, here 880, okay. And here 800. That means this is a higher ground. Now, the V-shaped is like this, okay. So what is this? It is concave or convex? Hello? If this is a yes, V, sir. sorry. If this is a V, this is which part? This is concave or convex? Concave part. Concave? That means here the concave is showing to the lower ground. But the convex part, as you go above it, the convex part will be towards the higher ground. And as you go above, the river valley slowly start to get a like a v, sharp V to gentle V shape. So this you can see that the convex part is towards higher ground. The concave part is towards lower ground. But for the mountain, here, this middle part is the mountain. For the mountain part, which is concave, this one or this one? Like which side is the concave? One or two? Hello? Yes, sir. One or two, which is concave? Like if one is concave. Uh, one is concave, like here, it, this is one. So this is concave side. This is convex side. So here you can see the convexity is towards the lower ground. This is lower ground. This is higher ground. So the convexity is towards the lower ground. So in V-shaped contours where there is a valley, your convexity is higher ground. And when there is a U-shaped contour, the convexity is towards the lower ground. Now, the steepness of slope. Okay. So, uh, how we can calculate the steepness? It is indicated by the spacing of successive contours. Like, if you can see, suppose this, uh, you just, all right, what is happening? You are seeing something like this, okay? A structure, a uniform slope structure is here. So if you, this is 400, so this will be 300, this will be 200. So whenever the slope is uniform, if uniform slope is there, so this is, okay? This one, this one. If both sides, the slope is same, then the contours will be Equispace, okay. Like contour spacing will be uniform. Like from this side spacing and this side spacing. Suppose if you are projecting here, this is 400, this is 300, and both the spacing in the two directions will be same. But what happens in case of like this? Okay. Suppose this is a structure. This is 400. This is 300. Sir, 400 is a meter. 400 meter yes yes okay, means it is elevation okay so it can be like meter feet anything but it is elevation so 300 meter 200 meter like this okay 
when you are projecting it onto a map, you can see that the steeper side, when the side is steeper, the contours are more closely spaced. And when the side is gentler, so this is gentler side, okay. This is steeper side. In the steeper side, the contours are closely spaced. And here, there is the, the spacing is greater. So just uh, imagine like when you are going from this slope, slowly transitioning to this slope. So when this is a gentle slope, you can see with uniform, like uh, you can see every contour distinctively with some uniform spacing. But when you are uh, decreasing the slope, like uh, if it, you are decreasing like this, then this, Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, uh, actually, do you people have any problem if I can extend it up to like 8.15? Do you have any class after this? No, sir. Okay, okay. Then I will try to like uh, finish up the things because we are a bit lagging behind. So uh, I will make sure that you people will understand everything and with that also I can finish the target of this week. So huh, we are here, up to here. Okay. So, I, yes. So when we are like increasing the slope, okay. Suppose first the slope is 45 degree, then slowly, slowly we can increasing the slope 90 degree. So when the slope is 90 degree, that means it is which type of uh, structure or which type of cliff it is. Vertical cliff. Yes, that means in vertical, you cannot distinguish between the contour lines. That means whenever the slope is very high, the spacing between the contours are decreasing. Like it is uh, becoming negligible. You cannot differentiate it between the two contours. They are slope closely spaced. And when the slope is decreasing like 45 degree, 35 degree, the slope, like they are a, the contours are distinct from each other. The spacing is more. And also uh, another 90 thing. Degree, then it... Hello? Sir, if yes. it's 90 degrees, then the space is become zero. Yes, absolutely. Then the spacing will be zero. That means you cannot differentiate between the contour lines. And they all will be appear like one line. Okay. Then uh, another two things is the concave slope and Con convex slope. Similar concept, just see if his slope is like concave. Okay. Now, if I am putting the contours here 400, 300, suppose 400 meter, 300 meter, suppose this is 200 meter. Okay. Now, which portion of the contours lie close to each other? Suppose this is A, this is B. Okay. The uh, up top portion, the bottom portion. It is a concave slope. Top portion. Yes, that, that means the top portion, in the top portion, what is happening? In the top portion, the contour spacing should be less or more? Top portion is less. Less, because the slope is higher here. The, here, the slope is lower. That means the contours lie close to each other at the top of the slope and further apart from each other at the bottom of the slope. You got this point? Sir, sir, spacing depends upon the rise of, the uh, run of the ground. Spacing depends upon the? Run of the ground. Matlab, jada run hoga to horizontal run hoga to jada spacing hoga. Yes, yes. Like, uh, just see na, when you are decreasing the slope, that means if the slope suppose becomes zero degree, that means it is a horizontal ground. When there is horizontal ground, the spacing will be clear and the spacing will be the largest. Similarly, when the ground is, the slope is decreasing, decreasing, and it is becoming vertical, you cannot differentiate between the two contours. Similarly, the yes, convex... Sir, vertical clip, vertical clip, uh, lawn mein koi change nahi hoga. Yes, yes, yes. Only rise mein hoga. Yes. 
and convex slope. Just see convex slope. Okay, so suppose this is like convex slope. This part. So which part will be uh, like which part the spacing will be more and which part the spacing will be less? If you are seeing it in map, this is a bottom part slope. is less. Bottom part is less and yes, top part is the more. bottom part will be less and the top part will be more. That's why the contours close to each other at the bottom of the slope and further apart from each other at the top of the slope. These things are clear for everyone. Hello. Other persons also please respond. Yes, like if you have any doubt, just ask no problem. Okay, we'll be moving to the okay contour interval, horizontal equivalent, and slope. So from this, um, like there are frequent question come in jam. So we will just see how it is. Oh, sorry. Yes. Just wait. I think the marker is not working here. Yes. So suppose you are seeing this contour. Okay. This is 500. This is 400. Similarly, you are seeing it in the map, but actually how the structure is present in the field. It is like this. It is a mountain because higher contour is in center. So 500, this is 400 similarly. So if this is a structure like this, okay. So this is a contour, the higher contour. And suppose this is 400, okay. So this is a lower contour. So this interval, like between the vertical distance between the two contours is called as the contour interval. Okay, this is the contour interval. And on the field, like it's just see on the map, these contours, between these contours, you are seeing a distance, okay? You are seeing a distance. The, uh, like the spacing is there. If you project it onto the field, this distance will be like this, okay? So this is, suppose you are standing here. So yes, this is A point. This is B point, okay? So this is A, this is B. And if suppose this point is C, you are C, just, okay? Then this part is the contour interval because it is the higher contour and this is the lower contour. And this AB, AB will be called as the traverse distance. Like if you are traveling from A to B, if A to B you are going on field, this is traverse distance. Like this is A, okay, this is A, this is B. You are going on field like this. And this distance, actually the horizontal distance between B and C, this is called as the horizontal equivalent. Now just see in this diagram, okay. Here the 500 is projected, 400 is projected, 300. Similarly, the projection is happening. And now you just see the contour spacing. Contour spacing means 500 to 400. So this is the contour interval, okay. Contour interval, this is 100 meter and HE means the horizontal equivalent. Suppose this, uh, this part, okay, horizontal equivalent. And this angle, like this angle, okay, or here, whatever angle you measure, this is called the slope. Like this is alpha, the slope angle. So just tell me if uh, we just uh, discussed uh, in the last slide that when the slope will be higher, so when the slope will be higher, then the uh, spacing between the contours will increase or decrease? Yes, sir. De increase or decrease? I'm asking. If slope is it high, will decrease. it will decrease. decrease. That means decrease. with increasing slope, the horizontal equivalent will be less because the spacing is low. Just see here. You just increase the slope, okay? Alpha, you increase the slope here. Here, just see, okay? This is a gentler slope. This is a like higher slope. 
Uh, actually, this structure is not so prominent. Uh, we'll be drawing another structure. Suppose this is this, this structure like this. So this is a high slope area. This is a low slope area. So for a low slope area, there will be larger horizontal equivalent. And for a high slope area, there will be smaller horizontal equivalent. And how you can prove it in trigonometrically, just see if this is a triangle, then what will be value of tan alpha? Sin alpha by cos alpha. No, no, like uh, tan alpha is P by B, you know, no. then what is P here and what is B here? In ABC, suppose this is 90 degree because height, this is 90 height by base. Yes, that means here, which CI, CI by HC -E or HC -E by CI? Which you control, control yes. interval by so CI -E. by HC. -E. Okay, and if you are keeping it constant, suppose contour interval is your fixed everywhere, it is 100 meter. Suppose you are fixing this, that, that means tan alpha is. Inversely proportional to horizontal equivalent. Horizontal. And tan alpha value means if alpha is zero, tan alpha is zero. And alpha is 90, tan alpha is? Maximum. Maximum. Minimum. That means when yes, it sir. is maximum, this is? Minimum. Minimum. So this is the principle. Like what is contour interval? Contour interval means the vertical spacing between the two contours. Horizontal equivalent means what you see on the map in between the two uh, distance. And slope is the inclination angle. Like if we are traversing from A to B, then uh, the triangle that is produced by ABC, the alpha will be slope. So sometimes what uh, Jam asks that I am traveling A to B, traverse distance of X kilometer, and my contour interval is uh, suppose uh, uh, 100 meter then what will be the slope angle? So here you don't need horizontal equivalent. You just need to put the sine alpha formula. Then you will be calculating the traverse distance. So you can see like mul multiple questions from this concept uh, already came in jam. And another thing you have to remember, sometimes in, uh, in the like question paper, it is just uh, seen like this. Suppose this is five centimeters. And on the right side, it is written one centimeter is equal to 100 meter, suppose. Then whenever you are calculating tan alpha, suppose you are calculating tan alpha and your CI is 100 meter, okay. So whenever you are calculating tan alpha, don't just go blindly by seeing the map that five divided by, sorry, 100, Contour interval divided by horizontal equivalent is five. Don't do that thing because you just have to convert the map scale into ground scale. If in the map, it is one centimeter in ground, it is hundred meter. That means if it is five centimeter, what will be its actual value? It will be 500, 500 meter. After putting this value, then you have to calculate the slope. So these things you have to be cautious while solving the numerical problems. Now, uh, just see same formula. We have already discussed contour interval by horizontal equivalent. For the same values of CI, the, we already discussed that gentler slopes will be more spacing and the steeper slopes will be less yes. slope until it becomes zero for the vertical slope. That means for a vertical slope, the HG is zero. Just see in the map here, just see. This is a gentler slope up to 500. Then you uh, go a mountain type thing. Then all again, you appear for 500. Again, 400. Here, 400. This is 400. This is 300. But after that, after the 300 contour, just see. Uh, okay. This is 300 contour. Okay. This is 300. So after 300 contour, you cannot distinguish between the other contours, like where is 200, where is 100, where is 0. Because from 300 up to 0, this is a 
vertical clip. Clear with uh, everyone clear with these concepts like uh, horizontal equivalent, slope, vertical clip, all these things. Yes, sir. Okay, nice. Then another concept is here that is scale. Like why you are using scale in topographic maps. I have already told that in a map, we have to present all the features that we are seeing on the field in a smaller scale. We cannot present them just they are present in the ground itself. So we just have to minimize their scale. We have to decrease their size. We have to decrease some distortion of their shape. That's why we use the scale. And the scale is of three types, okay. Three types. One is verbal scale that I have used in uh, this part, okay. This is, this is verbal scale that one centimeter is equal to 15 kilometer. That means if you are uh, given a map, uh, and suppose this is a contour topographic map, and it is told that the spacing is five centimeters. So while converting for ground distance, you just have to multiply it with 15. That means it will be 75 kilometers. But uh, another uh, method is also used that is called a representative fraction. What is it? Means representative fraction means if we are taking the distance on the map is one, okay. If we are taking the distance on the map is one, then with respect to this, how much value this ground distance have? Suppose we tell that five centimeter on map is equal to 100 kilometer on ground. So if we are presenting it in the representative scale, what will be its scale? Just convert it like this. One centimeter on map will be 20 kilometer. 20 km. And here you just have to remember that this is a ratio. And if this is a ratio, that means both sides should have same units. So this will be 20 into 10 to the power 5 centimeter. Like uh, one kilometer is 1000 meter into 100 for centimeters. That means your representative fra fraction scale will be here 1 divided by uh, 20 to 10 to the 5. Okay, means 20 lakh. So here 20 lakh. You understood this part like the representative fraction? First, you have to compare both sides, then you have to uh, like frame it into unity. After coming to the unity part, you just have to see both sides have the same unit. Then you divide like uh, the left, right, or whichever side you take the one, one divided by the other side. So this is the representative fraction. Another is the bar scale or graphic scale. Okay. So what does it indicate? Suppose uh, in a map, you are given a map here. And below the map, so this is a map. Okay. And you don't know the exact distance between these two places, A, B. So you, for your reference, below the map, there is a scale provided just like this. And what it indicates that if you are going this much distance, X, suppose this is X, if you are going X distance on the map, that will be indicating 50 miles. 50 miles. And if suppose you, you are going smaller distance, so you just put your scale between the A and B. And suppose it is coming like this, okay, between uh, this much up to this much. Suppose it comes like this. That And if it is X, then what you will convert it into uh, kilometers if you are converting it, then it will be 20 kilometers. Clear uh, for everyone, like verbal scale, representative fraction scale and uh, graphic scale. Yes, sir. Okay. And then, uh, okay, I think, sir, please re explain how to calculate. Okay, which part? Ankit Soni.
okay like i will do it uh, the last uh, part of the class just uh, i will be finishing the base mapping so uh, whenever we are taking any doing any topographical survey or you, if you will be going to the gsi or any institute here they will be taking the help of topo sheets okay for the topographical survey or for the geological survey so how these topo sheets are used and how the indexing of these topo sheets happen that thing we will be studying here so in the topo sheet first thing is the base map okay base map is like a reference map the like the ultimate thing from which we derive the topo sheets so the base map for the base map mapping the uh, like the organization which formulate this base map they take it uh, in a this convention way like the latitude will be 4 degree north to 40 degree north and the longitude will be 44 degree east to 124 degree east like how it is happening just see see suppose they took from this location like whichever location is covered in this map so they just took like here 4 degree north from 40 degree north then in longitude this is 44 degree east longitude and this is 124 degree east longitude and within that our india is come just see this portion this this one like this one this is india so they took in this way and how uh, they are studying it they just divide like you just you can see that the interval is 4 degree okay here 4 degree here 4 degree so for 4 degree into 4 degree they divided into 1 degree into 1 degree then there will be how much divisions like uh, suppose you are here 36 degree 40 degree okay first okay sorry sorry first thing will be division will be 4 degree into 4 degree so just see base map is divided into sections 4 degree latitude 4 degree longitude and how they are named they are named one at the extreme northwest like just see here one okay one this is two this is three this is four five similarly just they are naming and the last one is the 136 here 135 okay 134 so just in the way they are named and the convention is they just have to avoid the sea portions like any part in which there will be no land they won't take that part so that's why they only took the land portions wherever land is occurring they divide it into such way that 4 degree into 4 degree sheets will be formed now just see that how the topo sheet is being indexed this sheet you just compare it with this one okay the last one just la just see this is 53 okay this part is the 53 this sheet this is 53 now you are dividing 53 into 16 parts why 16 because this is 4 degree okay this is 4 degree this is 4 degree now you want to divide it into 1 degree 1 degree okay 1 1 then there will be how much divisions how many divisions there will be like you want to convert 4 degree 4 degree into 1 degree into 1 degree then how many divisions will be there 16 divisions yes 16 divisions and each division will have length 1 degree like latitude longitude 1 degree that means this is 29 this is 30 this is 31 similarly if you are going in this direction this is anybody asking anything hello okay no problem then you are just dividing into 1 degree into 1 degree so this is and you are naming it how it is, you are naming you are naming it vertically downwards like a b c d e f g h similarly from p and just remember the this uh, map 
the 53 base map it has scale 1 is to 10 lakh okay 1 is to 10 lakh now you are dividing into 16 divisions like 4 degree into 4 degree to 1 degree 1 degree hence the scale will become 10 lakh divided by 4 that will be it will be 1 is to 2 lakh 50,000 for each each of these sections each of these sections okay so suppose the question uh, a question comes that write down the scale of 53a so the scale will be 1 is to 2 lakh 50,000 but if the a is abs absent or the question is asked only the 53 base map 53 number base map then that will be 10 lakh so if after 53 or notation is used a to p any notation then that will be 1 is to 2 lakh 50,000. Now, one exception is there. When you are taking one section from here, okay, suppose we are taking the K section and what will be its length? 1 degree into 1 degree. Okay, so now you are taking this here. You are just taking this section into here. This is 1 degree into 1 degree. Now, you want, you again, divided into 16 parts like each one degree is divided into four portions that means each portion will be how much if we are dividing one degree by four then each port length will be how much latitude longitude 15 minutes yes 15 minutes that means if you are taking 15 53 k so 53 k is lying between 29 and 30 okay so here you are writing 29 degree, here you are writing 30 degree north. And each proportion will be 29 degree 15 minute, 29 degree 30 minute, 29 degree 45 minutes. Similarly, the longitude is also divided. Now in this part, actually if you calculate the scale should come 1 is to 62,500. Actually, mathematically, the scale should come like this if you divide it into by 4. But the convention is taken as 1 is to 50,000. Like the exact reason, I even don't know why it is taken, but if the convention that all of uh, the geologists follow, that if for this part, for any section like 53K, you can tell 53K by 15 or 53k by 9, any section, any section here, each section will have the scale of 1 is to 50,000. And now if you take one small section here to here, okay. Suppose you take this section, 53k by 16 to this section. Now if you are taking, just tell me what will be the length and uh, breadth of this section, this yellow section, this one. What will be the latitude, longitude, length? This will be same, not 15 minutes. Here, just see. Yes, sir. This is 29 degree. This is 29 degree, 15 minutes. So the each length will be 15 minutes. Now the last part is we divide each section into two parts. Like we just divide it into four directions. One is northwest, one is northeast, similarly southwest and southeast. So if you are dividing into two parts, hence the scale will become one is to 25,000. Is it clear? Like here you just write 29 degree here 29 degree 7.5 minutes here 29 degree 15 minutes you got it uh, this point or any but you have any problem just like yes, ask sir. other persons uh, will be taking like uh, uh, 10 minutes more okay then we'll uh, i will wind up the class just tell me things got clear or you have any problem understanding in any part
others who are uh, present here like uh, i could remember uh, sir this last talk okay which the okay okay 53k by 16 53k by 16 okay just see if this is this small section is 53k okay oh sorry this small section is 53k this is 53k by 16 and you are putting here 29 degree and here 29 degree 15 minutes similarly for the longitude if you are go to longitude here it will be around uh, i think 20, okay 79 degree okay 79 79 degree and here east and 79 degree 15 minute east so if the length is 15 minute if this is also 15 minute you just divide it into like this okay so each portion will be how much 7.5 minutes is it clear yes sir yes if it is 7.5 minutes then that will be you just name them according to according to the directions like this is north east this is north west this is south west this is south east so in this way the mapping index is generated and just remember that each of these sections sections like 53k by 1 or k by 11 anything these are called as the uh, sorry okay these are called as the topo sheets and these are called as the 1 degree and 1 degree part these are called as the degree sheets so this part the topo sheet this is the degree sheet after uh, like going through this part just try to uh, like appear this uh, two questions like uh, first try the second one okay the simple one just tell me which of the following topo sheet doesn't exist just see here uh, this diagram just see here like 53k 1 to 16 or uh, just see how it is written and now just try that which of the following topo sheet doesn't exist sir answer is c 56 Why? by 17 why because the 17 division is not possible only 16 he, division yes absolutely because here just you see any division we are making we are making it highest 16 divisions so 1 to 16 is there so 17 cannot come so that's why this is the answer now just tell me this question okay this one the distance between two points on this map is 4 cm so what is the actual distance between them so uh, just tell me anyone uh, what is the scale of this type of map 1 is to 50000 2 one is to 50000 two came sir no how it is 50000 just see if you are writing 55 simple it is 1 is to 10 i am just writing 10 lakh if it is 55k it is 1 is to 2 lakh 50000 if i am writing 55k by 16 it is 1 is to 50000 if it is 55k by 16 with one direction it is 1 is to 25000 that means 1 cm on this map will be equal to the 25000 cm on the graph so that means just calculate how what will be the actual distance one 10 km 1 lakh 1 lakh cm because 4 cm is then just multiply 4 then it will be 1 lakh cm uh so i think uh, we have to okay just try just try here this question just try quickly
sir b b okay why sir 58 is written there is no l symbol yes because if we are if we are dividing it into 16 part only a to p is possible there will be no qrs so this is not possible absolutely right now just calculate this one i already told this quickly tell me if it is 55 d then what will be the scale One is two, two yes, one is to two lakh fifty thousand. If it is fifty five k by sixteen, what is the scale? One is to one fifty thousand. Fifty thousand and just divide two lakh fifty thousand. Uh, and if you are dividing it like this, then uh, like here, just do it uh, like I am doing corrector. Not just tell me. Uh, divide okay so this is this will be one is to five one is one, one is to five. Five. five okay so uh uh okay these things uh okay just try the, these two questions quickly we only have three minutes left so just uh, try it quickly which top opposite it's present immediate south to 57 k by 16 I'm doing it like this. Suppose this is 57. Okay. This is 57 K. So this is like this. This is one, two, three, four. Similarly, this is 16. Now it is telling what is immediate south. That means at this position, which will be present. Now see, if this is, okay, like this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. J by so this is after K, what will become? L, like you are dividing it into 16 portion. You are also dividing this into 16 portions. That means uh, below the 57K, which will come? 57L by 13. 57L. If this is 57L, similar notations, 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and now it will come as 13. So the immediate south will be 57L by 13. Okay. Now this question is the uh, like homework for you. Just uh, try to solve this one. You can take a screenshot or quickly because we don't have much time left. Just uh, take a screenshot and try to solve it and uh, tell me the answer. Because this is a MSQ question. So there can be multiple answers. Okay, just try to solve this. Uh, you took the screenshot or uh, write down the question? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, sir. Now, hello. Uh, sir, uh, can you put the past lecture in the uh, in the app? There is no uh, there is uh, no past lecture. I am oh. attending this second lecture. Okay, okay. Actually, like uh, that part uh, is doing like the, sir is doing uh, the admin like whoever the Panjo of admin they are doing. I have I don't have direct access to the uploading part so i will uh, request sir to upload it today okay uh, there will be no problem and if this is happening then we won't be having any examination the uh, on this sunday we will be doing it on the next week because you don't have any materials or videos i think uh, with you so just prepare it okay and we will be meeting the uh, in the next class on monday so just uh, revise these things and uh, it will be beneficial for you. And I am putting the Google form link. Please uh, share sir, your B feedback. And C the answer. Okay. Sir, B and C the answer. Uh, okay, I will, uh, because I only have 30 seconds left for this meeting. Okay. So we'll be discussing in the next class. And just uh, please give your feedbacks so that I will improvise sir. more and put some more things. Sir, may I take a doubt class? 
uh, yes, uh, you can request in the group, and if the admins tell me, I can take the doubt clearing class. This.